Hi, I'm Vanessa Conlin, Master of Wine and Head of Wine at Wine Access, and I had the distinct honor of collaborating with Chef Gary of Le Comptoir in Los Angeles um, to pair four beautiful wines with his cuisine. So I just watched sort of a master class <laughs> Thank you. of putting together this lobster roll. It was like ballet watching this all come together. <laughs> And I'm excited to uh, to open this wine mm. and um, and share this with you. So yummy. So this was one that I was really excited about. Um, talk about a power couple. This is a collaboration between husband and wife, mm. uh, Andy Erickson and Annie Fabia. Mm. So uh, Annie is uh, one of the most renowned viticulturalists yes. in Napa Valley. She's worked with people like John Consgard, Kathy Corson, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, David Abreu, mm -hmm. and then Andy Erickson, of course, yeah. uh, uber famous winemaker. He's made wine at Dalla Valle, yes. uh, Screaming Eagle, mm -hmm. Ovid, and I had the distinct honor of working with him at Arietta, awesome. which was uh, one of uh, the most memorable experiences <laughs> in my life because right. not only is he an amazing winemaker, but he's right. so nice right. and humble. Right. So, like you. <laughs> Thanks. So this is Chardonnay from Coombsville. Mm. Uh, Chardonnay, as you know, loves cooler yes. climates, yes. and often we think of Chardonnay from Napa Valley coming from Carneros. Mm -hmm. But um, on the eastern side, just outside of the town of Napa, mm. is Coombsville Appalachian, which gets a uh, cooling influence there as well. So um, Carbone is named for the property. So yes. Annie and Andy bought this old farmhouse mm. uh, and the original owner was named Anton Carbone. Mm. And they found these little pieces of paper and scraps of letters in the house, right. completely restored it, and they right. live above the winery. I think it might be the smallest winery yes. in all of Napa Valley. I visited that 21 years ago. Amazing. Yes, uh, well, yeah, as a young cook. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Mm. What I love about this is it has that really crisp mm -hmm. acidity. Yes. It has richness, but it doesn't have that overly heavy, no. buttery feel. It's right. actually the same style um, of the of the Chardonnay mm. that won the um, 1976 Judgment yes. of Paris, which was not this wine. This was the Chateau Montalena, sure. but it's made in a similar fashion where it's blocked malolactic mm. fermentation. Mm -hmm. So you keep that real freshness, but yes. then you still get some richness and right. breadth from being in, in right. barrel. Yeah. So tell us though, what, in terms of pairing, what made you <laughs> what made you well, decide on the lobster roll with this pairing? When, 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 why I decided this was when you um, sent us over this bottle of wine. Um, I was a little skeptical because I said, "Oh, it's a Napa Valley Chardonnay." Yeah. And so we took it over to um, to, to, to Malibu Mart, to um, to Broadway Oyster, and we uh, decided to open it up with some seafood and. Lobster roll. We ordered lobster rolls. We ordered some some oysters, and we ordered some um, some fried fish, and all of the fixings. And this just it sang. It went right through as far as the acidity. I thought that the um, it's but but it still carried its own because a lot of times when I like to pair wines, the wines and the food kind of get meshed and, and intertwined because they they're complementary, contrasting flavor profiles. Right. Um, this was distinct, yeah. so I smelled it. and I go, "Wow, it smells delicious!" And then, and then the, and then the acidity, which I hate to say, bracing, because then that becomes off-putting. But there was just this savory kind of, kind, kind of acidity that made it almost like putting lemon juice on seafood. So it, it, it just made it perfect. And, and to know where it comes from, and to know that this part of the country and this little small little pocket of mm. this hollowed ground can make something like this is, it, it, it shocked me. This was, this was, it, it, it's so delicious. It's delicious on its own and it's delicious with this, with the food. Well, um, before we yeah. taste this together, yes, though, I, I, I do have a question for yes. you. Yes, yes. Um, which is when we first met, which was at a, an event mm -hmm. in Atlanta, I think. Um, yes, ma'am. Now, not everything at this event went perfectly, as I'm sure they, they almost not. never do. But <laughs> you were so cool under pressure. Like, I Thank didn't you. see you flinch right. or sweat. Or, like, where, where did that coolness come from? Um, working, for, w working for the masters, um, like Chef Keller, and then working for Chef Joachim, and being put under um, a huge amount of stress that knowing that you're just not cooking for yourself, you're, 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 you're cooking 
for these gentlemen and that their reputation is on the line oh, because yeah. of you. Um, so the only way that you can survive that kind of pressure is to is to learn how to kind of embrace it. And there's no there's no true formula. That's the only way I was able to do it. And and and, and I think to spend your your, your your time and energy complaining about it, you could use that to, to, to make things positive. And when we were cooking at the Atlanta event, you, you knew there was no kitchen to be had. <laughs> so we were cooking in uh, what they call holding boxes where they usually put plates to keep them warm. Uh, so we were cooking out of things like that. We were cooking over uh, plate warmers. Um, but when you cook as long as I have, it's about, uh, it, it, it's about mastering the transfer of heat. So whatever heat source it is, whether it's coming from uh, a $100,000 AGA stove or it's coming from uh, a, a, a catering tote, transfer of heat's the same thing. Um, so just understanding that and yeah. enabled us to do it. So long story short, thank you. Well, I appreciate yes. it. Obviously memorable. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. So let's see. Let's, you, you, yes. would, would you like to have? Would you like to have a try? Absolutely. Okay, so. to have your own little plate because you deserve one. Thank you, you're, Chef. You're welcome. That's so pretty. <laughs> and this is a generous amount too as well. And then just kind of... I'm going to do wine by yes. wine. Yes. Okay. So, so I'm just gonna go for it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you taste the chive. You taste the, mm. you know, you, you know the licorice, um, or you smell the licorice. Mm -hmm. You really don't taste it. And then the parsley will give it a little bit of uh, a little bit more citrus. And then the squeeze of lemon. I usually always have a little bit of lemon with me, mm -hmm. even after they put some lemon. Um, so I like to squeeze just a little bit more, just. As, as our mature taste buds, um, as our uh, taste buds mature, we require just a little bit more acid, um, just like everything else. I think that, well, that's with experience. Oh, and you know what I love? Is, yes, ma'am. Because I tasted the wine, tasted a bite, yeah. went back to the wine, and it actually brought out this whole other right. sort of base note in the wine where it was very high toned and bright and delicious and, yeah. and vibrant, but it brought out this kind of savory, a little bit like earthy mm -hmm. richness to the right, wine right, as well. Right. But it still stayed. I know it's complimentary, and it's mm -hmm. almost like, like I said, like squeezing lemon onto um, onto an uh, onto a dish to brighten it up. It does brighten it up, but it still holds true that what this wine is is almost a co-star. Mm -hmm. So it's here and here, and and it's very distinctive. I love it. Well, awesome pairing. <laughs> awesome pairing. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>